All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? As it turns out, a lot of you only go to your local stores whenever you're going to play pre-releases, and that's totally fine. Some of you probably go when you play Commander, too. But pre-releases are the most popular event that happens four or five times a year at everybody's store, and a lot of new people go in not really knowing how to build a sealed deck from their pre-release kit. So today, I picked one up, and we're gonna practice building a sealed deck. All right, so we have one for Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle Earth, because that's the most current one as the time of me recording this. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up right quick. Now, a few quick things. Most of the time you're gonna have a die, which comes in here just for tracking life or spin down counters, I'll call it. You normally have a pre-release card that's going to have this like date stamp on it. You can almost always play with that. So that's cool. It's just like getting a bonus card. And then you're gonna have six packs. Okay, now I've opened all six of our packs and this is where you have to decide how you wanna organize your cards. I tend to put them in stacks of creatures and spells of the matching color. Other people do them all by casting costs. It's just whatever works for you. The biggest thing is though, there's generally a set of loose rules, if you wanna call it heuristic, for how we put together sealed decks. You often want to have somewhere between 22 and 24 spells, and the rest are gonna be land. So that means you're gonna have 16 to 18 land, depending. More land if you have more expensive spells, or fewer lands if you have cheaper spells or have a lot of cards that help you search for land or get mana. Okay, now that I got all the cards sorted out, this is a little bit messy, but stick with me here. You generally wanna start by looking for the piles that have the most creatures because those are gonna be your most common threats. Now, sometimes you can get away with having a stack that has a large pile of creatures, like say our white, for example, and can still pair them with something like red or green that only has a few creatures because you're gonna get the bulk of your stuff from white and you're just splashing the other color. But you're often gonna have like an even mix of both colors or at least like 60-40. So you're often going to want to check them all out. Right now we know that we can eliminate blue because somehow I only got three blue creatures out of six packs, which is kind of rare. Now, another thing I like to do is taking a look at our gold cards and seeing if there's anything we can play in the colors we're considering. In this case, we have a red and blue card, a four color card, a blue green card and a blue black card. So the downside is all of our gold cards happen to need blue Aww. and we're not gonna be playing blue. So those get eliminated, unfortunately. And there were some cool spells uh, also happen to be blue and black. However, the one happens to be green and black. So something that we can consider and I'll set aside for now. Another thing you can look at too is if you have any lands that are multi lands or can help you get any color. Those are things to keep in consideration because those could help your deck out quite a lot. We have a lot of white creatures, a very good amount of black creatures, and looks like a good amount of spells for both. So I'm probably going to just jump to that, though I think we could make a case potentially for red having a few quality cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and for the purpose of this for like quick deck building, I'm gonna eliminate the red and the green cards. Now here, a very interesting thing has happened. Like I generally have more white cards to use creature wise, but the problem is we don't really have anything real powerful. We have a couple of flyers, which is good because there's not that many of those in the format. So we're kind of really limited. We did get two bills, which are cool. So if we want to do stuff that produces food or tokens, that would uh, be pretty sweet, but otherwise not a lot to work with. So in this case, while I thought I was going to play white because I had the most cards in it, Turns out the power level of the stuff we have is not that strong. So we're probably gonna move into another color. We do wanna take a look at the black cards. And here again, we got a uh, flyer. We have a pretty good creature for producing treasure. Also has flash and menace, which is pretty nice. Uh, this, if we decide to play orcs and whatnot, uh, the bats are also very good if we're producing any type of tokens. And again, if you're amassing orcs, those count as tokens. So this could be pretty nice. These are all pretty good. This is a recurring token which works pretty well with something like the bats. So you kind of go through and say, okay, we have some pretty quality stuff, a good sized creature here. Then I want to look in really quickly and say, okay, do we have any quality removal? Well, we do have a card here that actually helps with amassing orcs. We could play Lash of the Balrog. This could give something a bonus in Death Touch. And because we're a little bit removal light, the next thing I'm gonna do is probably look to red because red tends to have the next most removal. And because of the way the set is built, I'm gonna be looking for other things that also work with amassing orcs. This also amasses orcs for two and can kill something, so that's a good card. This also amasses orcs, amasses orcs, and then gives everything plus one in menace. 
Uh, this is a three damage removal spell. And then some decent creatures. We have a five, four with haste with an upside ability. We have a two, three that actually can pump a creature every turn. We have Gimli that every time we kill opponent's stuff, we'll deal extra damage. And then we have a four, four that could get us an extra turn, which is all uh, extra attack step, I should say. And then we have a card that can produce two humans and give our humans haste for the turn. So as it turns out, we have 13 black cards and 11 red cards which means we're probably going to play something like nine swamps and eight mountains, which would be 17 land. We're not gonna have to play any of our multicolor lands because we really only have two colors and I don't have many things that need two red in the cost or two black in the cost. So it should be very easy to cast any of our spells if we can get just one of each mana color and that is actually totally okay for this build. And I will say that while we ended up with a couple fewer creatures than I would generally like, we actually ended up with several spells that could produce creatures because of the amass orcs mechanic. And we did get a good amount of removal and even one spell that could produce some token creatures. And there's really not a lot to complain about there. This actually would probably turn out to be a pretty decent deck to play with, which is surprising because it's not necessarily where we thought we were gonna start when we laid all the cards out in the beginning. And that's it. It's really that easy to build a sealed deck for your next pre-release. Or if you just play for fun at your local store and play any sealed events with six booster packs. But I hope these rules helped. If there's anything else you would like to know, ask me a question down in the comments. I think it'd be pretty good. And if you're wondering about what the different color combinations are in Magic or why we call them what we do, check out this video.